We are headed out again with the old Sea Force 500. Today we'll be riding out here. A little different scenery than what we're used to. Not really. I ride out here all the time, so. <laughs> this is more of our spring riding grounds, though. A little bit of a look. Over the valley. I think it's just before 7 a.m. So we will get riding. to mention uh, I actually don't have my boy with me today so I'm ripping it pretty good coming up here on the road uh, and this looks pretty dang fun <laughs> it goes pretty good um, we just barely went up a pretty decent hill back there and I was surprised how much this thing pulls uh, the hills it's got a pretty good torquey feel to it uh, and it's a pretty steep hill it was around about five uh, it was 5200 rpm uh, seems like it's the sweet spot on this machine and it pulled it pretty dang good so it's been pretty fun going down this road so we'll get going hopefully the wind noise isn't horrible I always fight I was griping about this low gear on the transmission. Now what the problem is, is it'll engage low gear and then it'll let you drive in low gear for a ways. And then all of a sudden it pops out of low gear. So I don't like that because if you're, you know, when I go into low gear, it's usually because I'm going up or down a steep hill. Um, so what's happened is I'm going up a, um, a steep hill and then it's popping out of low gear and then I'm just sitting there essentially in neutral on an incline. So then you got to kind of basically sit there with your brakes, you know, squeezing your brakes and then trying to rock it into gear. And so it's just been a pain in the butt, but I was watching a video and a guy was saying, and some of you have commented that, you know, after a few hundred miles or whatever, it kind of breaks in and it seems to have stopped doing that. But um, this machine's got 140, I think, miles on it. No, it was 170 miles on it. Um, but a guy was saying when you go, I guess I can't shift because my foot's not on the brake. But when you go to shift into low gear, he was saying don't just rock it into the groove, but actually push it all the way up here to the front. So push it all the way to the front and then let it come back. Whoops, sorry. Then let it come back into the groove. And he was saying he has better luck with it staying in low gear. And you can also come in here and take this panel off um, and there's a shift linkage and you can adjust that and play with that. So I'm going to try doing that, you know, pushing it all the way forward to try and get it into low gear. Hopefully that fixes the problem. Um, if not, maybe I'll have to go in and change that linkage. Mess around with it a little bit, see if I can get it to stay in gear a little bit better. Pretty raw 
rocky and that looks a little steep up there. So I'm going to try and shift it all the way up and down. So I pushed it all the way up here. And let's see um, if we have that problem again. Okay. I'm in low gear. Oh, <laughs> looks like it's going to take a lift. Uh, let's go right. See what it does. I think I want to go on that left trail, but we'll see how it does in low gear. Okay, it's climbing. These those are bigger rocks than I thought they were, geez. Still going. Okay, let's see if I ease off the RPM. Okay, it's still in gear. That's a good sign. Basically leveled off. Uh, you know what? I'm thinking that was just a shortcut. I think that's the trail right there. Okay, well at least that time it seemed like it worked just fine. See, so yeah, like I was saying, so I got the foot on the brake. Basically, you got to push it all the way up like that and then let it rock back into place instead of going just like this. I think you don't get it in gear. I think that's what I'm running into. Like you can kind of get up to about 18 20 miles an hour is where let it get up to which is decently fast i guess for low gear It's 7,000 feet up here, somewhere around there, if I remember right. It's not super high, but... Uh, there's really no other kind of trees other than these junipers. No aspens or pine or anything like that. As I say it's kind of deserty, um, high desert kind of feel. It feels nice out here. I actually got a coat on or jacket, I guess I should say. I don't know what the temperature is, but I'd say it's probably right around 70-ish right now. It's overcasty. It's supposed to rain later today, so might get a little rain on us. I was bugged though, where I usually come out and ride, and the gate was closed and locked. So I think that right there you pass through some private, but it's only like, I don't know, 30 acres of private and then you go right back into public. But I guess they have to have their gate closed and locked to keep everybody out. Which is frustrating. It's just like, yeah, I get that. That's your private land. Do whatever you want with it. But at least give us access. But I don't know if they necessarily have to. though this 
machine, uh, you know, the, the initial engagement of the CVT is actually pretty smooth. You know, it's really not that jerky in high or low. It's a little bit more jerky in low, but that's kind of to be expected. But in high gear, the initial takeoff is fine. Let's see if we can make this. Here's where I had my deer hunt last year. Um, uh, we saw only one buck when we came scouting around this time of year. That's so mid-August. Saw a decent sized two point. And we saw quite a few does, probably, I don't know, 15, 20 does. But when the hunt rolled around, we didn't see nothing. I think we saw like two of those the entire time we were out here. It's getting pretty out here. I like riding out here. It's pretty fun. This is one of the places that I don't think a lot of people come. I don't think a lot of people know about it. It's fine by me. I'll keep it a secret. I don't need every Tom, Dick, and Harry on their $50,000 side by side out here. I wonder, uh, so I did find that there's a CF Moto makes a windshield for this machine. And I'm kind of tempted to maybe buy it for, well, when it gets colder in the fall, we like to go camping up the mountains probably be nice to have that windscreen to keep the wind off you. But I'm wondering also for filming if it would be a good wind block. Get a little momentum here. dust and there's no mud. Perfect. Cannot complain. try and show you I like the engine braking on this machine so go a little bit and let off the throttle that basically brings me to a stop it's not super abrupt and it 
doesn't like uh, lock the tires up and do that weird skiddy thing like some CBTs will do. It just gradually kind of brings you to a stop, which I like. That's kind of what I prefer. basically stopping me. If I want it to go, I just give it a little throttle. Just ride a little throttle, it keeps a constant pace. like to put this machine up against something you know similar in the same class um, some that come to mind are like the Kodiak 450 or 7 I think it's a 700 um, or maybe a Honda Rancher or uh, Rubicon or is it Rencon? Or your Sportsman uh, 570, the new Can Am 500, single cylinder. Still over here. The new Can Am 500 single cylinder would probably be a good comparison. The Articat 600. All machines that would be interesting to compare to this one. Anyways, we're going to head back. Probably wrap up this video. Thanks for watching.